Hello everyone. Finally, a technical topic today: uh, dry bulb versus wet bulb temperature. A question that has been confusing the two students since ages now. Dry bulb and wet bulb. Two extremely important concept when it comes to heat transfer uh, and uh, temperatures and the question that is commonly asked in interviews as well as in semester vivas particularly that what is the difference between dry bulb and wet bulb temperature which is going to be lower dry bulb temperature or wet bulb temperature we are going to clear all the confusion today with a short video of ours so stick to the video till the end so uh, talking about dry bulb and wet bulb temperature straight away dry bulb temperature as the name suggests is a temperature that is measured by keeping a thermometer with a bulb with the bulb of the thermometer this is the bulb of the th thermometer exposed to atmosphere without anything that is dry completely dry not any moisture or any layer of water attached to it not any liquid attached to it it's a dry bulb exposed to atmosphere and it is measuring the temperature and this is the dry bulb temperature so it is straight away the temperature of the air or the atmosphere that is measured supposedly it is 25 degrees celsius so it straight away measures the temperature of the air that is at least 25 degrees celsius uh, temperature atmosphere now talking about the wet bulb temperature now many people do confuse up here what is exactly wet bulb temperature as the name suggests, once again, the bulb of the thermometer is covered with a cloth that is uh, wet or it is itself covered with a layer of water. The bulb is covered with a layer of water surrounding it. So what is the concept of it? Why water and why is the wet bulb temperature different from the dry bulb temperature? What will happen if we wrap a cloth with water in it? The straightaway concept you see, cloth wrapped with water. Now what happens is, it depends on the air surrounding this bulb whether the air is saturated with water or not what is the relative humidity of air supposedly the relative humidity of air is 30 percent 30 percent relative humidity of air so there is a sufficient amount of space in the air to accommodate water now what happens if we keep a uh, bowl or like a bucket of water and we allow the air above it what will happen slowly this water will try to evaporate in the air because the partial pressure of water vapor in this the partial pressure of water vapor in this air is relatively lesser than the partial pressure of water in this water itself because it's pure water and air contains very less amount of water so until the partial pressure on both the sides that is in liquid and air matches each other there is going to be a driving force a mass transfer driving force very important a mass transfer driving force mass transfer driving force now this is the thing you see because of this mass transfer driving force because of the difference in the partial pressure the water tends to evaporate as water vapors in the air and tries to saturate the air that is the relative humidity of the air is increased the humidity is uh, increased that is air is absorbing moisture from the water bucket so whenever we wrap this bulb with a cloth wrapped with water the water will try to evaporate into the atmosphere. Now, the concept of it all depends on the relative humidity of the air, incoming air or the surrounding air around the bulb. If the relative humidity is 100%, then the dry bulb temperature will be equal to the wet bulb temperature because there is simply going to be a sensible heat transfer from air to uh, this bulb and when both the sides becomes 25 degrees Celsius each, the sensible heat transfer will stop and the uh, thermometer will show 25 degrees Celsius. But if the relative humidity is 30%, what will happen? Water will try to evaporate into the atmosphere to saturate the air that is present because the air doesn't contain any water vapor or contains very less amount of water vapor. So in the process of water getting transferred in the air as water vapor, as water vapor, what will it need? The water getting converted to water vapor, it will need a latent heat. It will need a lambda, my friends. So in case it needs a lambda, it needs a latent heat, who will supply this latent heat? Immediately the rest of the water or the cloth or the bulb itself, that is the surface attached, immediate to the water, immediate to the water will tend to lose heat, to give heat to the water to evaporate. So it loses, the surface loses, the remaining portion of the water, the remaining portion of the water loses sensible heat, loses heat, sensible heat, sensible heat to give this portion that is evaporated in the atmosphere latent heat. 
so that sensible heat from the water itself or the pulp itself goes into evaporate the water as a water vapor and transfer it into the atmosphere so what will happen to the pulp and the remaining water instead it will drop down the uh, heat transfer has already occurred both sides is having 25 degrees celsius and suddenly there is a transfer of water vapor this 25 degrees celsius will become 24 degrees celsius because some amount of heat have, has been compromised as latent heat given to water vapor so this process will continue when the relative humidity is low the rate of evaporation the rate of heat transfer so basically the mass transfer is driving the heat transfer now this wet bulb temperature is the concept driving the uh, working principle of an air cooler driving the working principle of a cooling tower if you haven't watched those videos refer to those videos you will understand how this wet bulb temperature is a major determining factor of this relative humidity of this evaporation of water vapor is actually determining determining um, step in uh, calculating the heat transfer or the final temperature achieved in the cooling tower or the air cooler because this is driving on this principle that some amount of sensible heat is compromised as latent heat given to the water vapor in the process the temperature drops down to 20, 24 degrees celsius drops down to 23 degrees celsius further by evaporation of further water vapor what happens is the remaining air which is at 25 degrees celsius will try to give heat to this bulb as soon as it goes down the bulb goes down to 23 degrees celsius as soon as this gives heat sensible heat will be transferred from air to the bulb thus what will happen since air is an is a, a capa like it, it, it's a thermal it is thermal capacity infinite so the air temperature will eventually not drop because the entire room is covered by air where bulk temperature is prevalent only when there is a huge quantity of water and a, a huge quantity of air and a small quantity of water so the air temperature will eventually not drop but some amount of heat from the infinite thermal capacity will be transferred to this wet bulb trying to bring its temperature up again because there is a um, heat transfer driving force there is a temperature driving force always going in between these two because the bulb is now at a lower temperature than the air itself so in the process when there is a sensible heat transfer involved the evaporative uh, loss of water is continuous and the evaporative heat transfer is also continuous in the process when will it strike a balance as soon as the relative humidity in the process increases like if i go for it straight away like let me make you understand when this uh, evaporative heat transfer or evaporative water loss is happening the relative humidity becomes 40 percent then 50 percent then 60 percent then 70 percent like this it increases and as it keeps on increasing the rate of rate of transfer rate of transfer of mass that is water vapor decreases because the driving force decreases rate of transfer decreases because the driving force decreases driving force is decreasing so what we see is the rate of mass transfer is decreasing the rate of heat transfer is decreasing the driving force is decreasing that is why both of these things the rate of heat transfer and mass transfer is decreasing so the water is evaporating slowly now which was a rapid case when it was 30 percent now since it is 60 percent the rate of heat transfer is lesser now what happens is whatever heat is coming from the air whatever heat whatever sensible heat is coming from the air to the bulb is taken up by the water and the water is evaporating taking it as latent heat so latent heat is taken up by water vapor so what is happening it is gaining a steady state very important guys steady state so wet bulb temperature is the temperature of the bulb when this steady state is achieved when the heat from the sensible the sensible heat from the air equals the latent heat from the uh, cloth through the atmosphere when this two strikes a balance when a steady state is reached that is no further change of temperature of the uh, wet bulb is occurring that is whatever heat is coming from the air is taken up by the water to evaporate as water vapor and I mean the bulb is not cooling down initially since the heat transfer is rapid since the uh, driving force is rapid since the relative humidity was less in the air the driving force is rapid and I am losing very fast heat I am giving very fast heat in 
uh, that respect, I'm not taking that much heat from the air. I'm taking it slowly, I'm losing it rapidly, my temperature is dropping. And at a certain point of time, whatever I take, I lose similar quantity because the driving force between me and the air has decreased because the air is now getting slowly saturated. And at absolute saturation, no further heat transfer will occur and it will stop taking, I will stop taking heat from the air myself. So at a steady state condition, when the sensible heat given by air equals the latent heat given by the wet bulb to evaporate the water, at that point of time, the temperature doesn't further change and that temperature is the WBT or the wet bulb temperature. As you have seen, that temperature will be somewhere around 22 degrees Celsius, maybe, let's say. At 22 degrees Celsius, the rate of heat transfer here is equal to the rate of heat transfer here. So the driver temperature, my driver temperature, my friends, my driver temperature is always dry bulb temperature is always greater than my wet bulb temperature. And this wet bulb temperature is my driving force. Whenever this wet bulb temperature is reached, no further loss or no further decrease of temperature is occurring. Same is the principle of air cooler. Air cooler. Same is the principle of cooling tower. CT, cooling tower, all of these follows the same principle and the final temperature of water or the air achieved is finally this is the wet bulb temperature of the water itself. So this is the concept of wet bulb temperature and this is why dry bulb temperature is always higher than wet bulb temperature, remember my friends. So we will keep on uh, bringing more videos like this and we will conclude here on this today. Uh, we might bring further comparisons between wet bulb and adiabatic saturation temperature. If you want that video, please do let us know in, over the mail or in the comment section. Uh, so I think that will be it for today. If you liked our video, like it, share it with your friends, subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much.